This is a Gabria annual meeting. So this is our big meeting of the year. It's very exciting. The focus this year is the focus that Gabria always has and Dow always has, which is safety. It's our number one priority in everything we do is the safety of our employees, the contractors at the site, the community. Yeah, so this is a wonderful opportunity for us all to get together and share the good work that's been done in that area. These meetings are really important because once a year we, we get the chance to share um, a little bit about Cabrillo with folks from the community and the broader community. So we have members, we have meetings amongst the members, but at our annual meeting we reach out to uh, educators and uh, government agencies and so forth and invite them in and share a little bit about Cabrillo. And today our focus was on safety with all of the upcoming work that's coming down uh, in the next few years, it's really important to stay on top of safety and make sure that all the workers who are employed in this expansion remain safe. Can you tell me a little bit about OSHA? We're the uh, enforcement agency. We're responsible for ensuring that workers have a safe and healthy work environment. So we do that through um, a couple of different ways, uh, obviously through enforcement, but also through um, outreach, education, training, partnerships and alliances where we're, we're working with people to um, help them come into compliance. What is the current state of safety issues? Um, well, you know, there's uh, a great many far-reaching um, safety implications because we have jurisdiction over a great many different industries. But I would say for the petrochemical industry, especially in South Louisiana, um, one of the concerns is, you know, all the expansions and the job growth. And so, you know, obviously that when you have a lot of uh, people in small spaces, um, you have to worry about the safety of everybody. Currently, there are a lot of projects planned for construction in the next 10 years. Uh, due to the low price of natural gas. So this region has become very competitive and there are a lot of expansions planned. So one of the challenges is getting a lot of new workers in. There are 80,000 or more new jobs forecasted that will be needed for this expansion. And many of those new jobs will be skilled construction workers. And that's why our focus here today is on safety because we have a lot of new people in the industry and it's very important to keep them all safe. Gabriel has been working with the local workforce investment councils, Louisiana Technical College system, uh, with the state in, in terms of being able to forecast these jobs, get them into the planning process so that people know that they're out there, that they'll need to be filled, and now the colleges uh, and ABC school are really working to, to fill those positions now, get people trained. Uh, we've seen on television, uh, some of these courses that are going on, and it's really, really encouraging. With the industry expanding, can you talk a little bit about challenges you're facing with workforce development? Oh, the, the opportunities are just so uh, out there for everybody who's interested in getting involved in either through uh, an engineering role or a skilled crafts role. There are tremendous amounts of jobs, and so the challenge is uh, getting the message out to enough people at what a wonderful career it can be to work. And some of these roles require four-year degrees, like engineering or accounting. Some of these roles, uh, a two-year degree or uh, a, uh, a certificate-type program can meet the needs, but it's, it's the training, it's the math-based, it's the science-based training that we need people to be focused on to give them the opportunities to come participate with the industries as we grow in this state. Why is safety so important? Um, because we all want to go home whole at the end of the day and uh, you know we shouldn't have to put ourselves at risk just to earn a paycheck. What are some ways that people can be more safe in the petrochemical industry? Well, um, you know, there's uh, something that we kind of refer to uh, sort of as the, the low-hanging fruit, and I'm actually going to talk about some of the top ten items that we cite as OSHA. Um, so some of the basics, like machine guarding, lockout, tag out, uh, fall protection. We know that um, falls, as a general rule, is the number one reason people die on the job. Um, being struck by moving equipment or moving loads. So. Um, Paying close attention to those areas uh, can certainly make for a safer work environment. Overall, we're very proud 
Specifically at Dow, we have a tremendous safety record. Of course, we never rest until the answer is zero injuries. Everybody goes home safely every day. The exciting part is that that's almost always true. We want to get it to be an always true. But it is a much safer industry to work in an industrial plant than working in retail, than working in health care. It's so important to all the members of Gabria that the, uh, the contractors, the company owners, the employees have a tremendous safety record when you compare it to just about any other industry, including those you're familiar with working at uh, a retail store or working in a hospital. This is a safer industry to work in. Marathon cares intensely about their employees and our employees are, are, are part of our success and so their success and their safety becomes a very important part of the business equation. Gabri is here as a resource for members to collaborate, to exchange best practices, and to utilize the tools that we've put into play using the Alliance Safety Council and other groups. Uh, so we have a lot of resources for the members to help with their safety programs. What are some things that Marathon does to keep their employees safe? Well, we train them and we are part of the not only the Gabria organization but the Alliance Safety Council and we have a, a, a very strong safety organization where we help monitor their work and make sure that they are safe we provide them the materials and equipment and things that they need to be safe at our, at our locations. What are some of the things that Dow Chemical has done to increase safety? Well the key is that it's the top priority not just for the leadership of the plant but it's the top priority for everybody on our site. It's in our culture that safety goes first, anything else you do is second. It's a real pleasure for me to be here. Um, I think this is the, the first time that uh, I've been at this event, so it's um, certainly nice to see some friendly faces and some familiar faces and to kind of meet some, some new folks too. Uh, so Connie asked for me to uh, talk a little bit about safety in the looking glass. and. Um, so I really I like that I, you know taking taking a look take the mirror out let's take a look where we're at um, and I did a little research on this though you know the looking glass is kind of an old-fashioned term for a mirror and you know we can pick the mirror up and we can peer into the mirror and uh, it should be a reflection of what we look at right now sometimes we don't necessarily like what we see uh, sometimes there's wrinkles and a gray hair there. Um, but you know, one of the things that, um, that struck me whenever I was really preparing for this is that not only do we really see right here, but if we look, really peer into the mirror, you can see what's behind you. So um, today what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about where we are, OSHA, where we are, Louisiana, with regard to safety, and, and, um, and look a little bit backwards. And um, I know in the next section that we're going to be looking into the crystal ball, but um, I might take a few slides or a few moments to look into the crystal ball, too, um, because it's um, very important to me. Um, and there, were, there, there have been things said already here. I was like, wow, uh, they've either been at our informal conferences or uh, they're looked at my notes for the speech. So I think we're all kind of on the same page. Um, and, and all this job expansion and growth uh, is certainly a, a time of anxiety for, for me and us. And so any opportunities that we have to work together, I certainly will embrace those. So um, I'm going to get a little help here with the slides. So where are we? What do we look like here in Louisiana? Uh, Anybody ever seen this? Wouldn't it be lovely if I were here telling you this? Um, I took, we took this picture over in Mississippi or in another country or that it was from 15 years ago. That's not the case. We can keep going. This is what we look like here in Louisiana. This is, can you guys see the ladder in front of the door? Okay. Two guys just down the road from the OSHA Baton Rouge area office. Uh, they are tied off. They're just tied off to each other. Um, and, and this guy here, I don't know if you can tell, the guy up at the top's got a roll of felt and he's going to throw it down to Joe because he's in a great position to catch. You know, who, who, we're into baseball. So 
Our mission is to ensure that every working man and woman has a working, safe, and health, I mean, a, a safe and healthy work environment. And so we've been around since 1970. You've already heard that. Um, before that date, there was really no place where workers in this country could uh, seek out assistance or have any assurance that they were going to be provided a safe and healthy work environment. And at that time, there were 38 people who were being killed on the job. Uh, today, if today is a typical day in America, there's 12 people who are going to get up and go to work and who are not going home. So I guess the good news is it's not 38 people. The bad news is, is it's still 12 people who aren't going home today. Okay. So this is our leadership, um, and, and you can go ahead. Um, we're a small agency tasked with a large job, and we know that the um, advances that we've made, uh, there are 65% less workplace fatalities and about 67 less workplace injuries and illnesses today than there was in 1970. And um, I'm smart enough to know that OSHA by itself didn't do that. That came as a result of a lot of work from people like yourself in this in this room. Um, and especially those in the, the petrochemical industry. Um, those host employers, you guys hold your contractors um, to standards that we couldn't get around to inspecting them. There's so few of us, and you can see the number of staff here. It would take us 139 years to go visit every workplace in this country if there were no additional workplaces added. So we can't get there. We can't do this by ourselves. We can't make the impact that needs to be made without people like yourselves. So we certainly appreciate the efforts and the opportunities to work with you. Um, I can tell you, I held an informal conference after we had cited a contractor one time for not wearing um, ball protection. And he came in and he said, gosh, I didn't know I had to wear fall protection. And I said, you didn't know? He said, well, I knew I had to wear them in the plant. But when I'm working out on commercial, I didn't know I had to wear them. I'm, I'm saying, so you're not going to die if you fall outside of a plant? I don't know. But anyway, it, it makes the point that you guys are, are doing a great job and in, in holding people to, uh, to a standard. So we can go ahead. So I want to look at the um, fatality statistics. If we're if we're holding the mirror up and we're looking, you know, unfortunately, when we talk about there's 12 people who aren't going home, some of those people are here in Louisiana. Um, and I have some statistics to share with you uh, over the last few years. Um, you can kind of look. We've been tracking since 2002. Last year was going to be the year that we weren't going to make it over 30. And then um, about the middle of the year, about in June, things started really popping. And so unfortunately, uh, we peaked over 32, and it set off a pretty bad, um, go ahead, it, it set off a pretty bad um, streak. Because our fiscal year started October 1st, and we had five fatalities in October. And to date, we have 23, and there was a call as I was leaving to come here that there was another fatality, and I don't know the specifics of it. I don't know if it's something that's actually um, going to require us to conduct an investigation. But um, so the slides I have are as of yesterday. That's a that's no longer a current slide. Um, so we're at 23. Um, what's interesting, I think, this year is that um, we've not had that many in construction. And where falls tends to be the number one reason that people die on the job, on the national landscape. Here in Louisiana, on the, the, the previous uh, couple of slides where um, we were showing all those numbers, for about 10 of those years in Louisiana, struck by was the number one reason people died on the job. Last year, falls moved up to number one. This year, we're back to struck by. But um, we really made a, a concerted effort um, to talk about struck bys last year and some of our partners and um, the folks that we're in alliance with ABC. Um, 
really embraced the challenge that, that we made to them to do some seminars on struck buys, and then they've done again the same thing this year on falls. So